Hi, I'm Harold Bell, the founder and creator of the original Inside Sports, the radio sports talk show that set the standards for sports talk in America today. In 1971, the original Inside Sports was one of a kind. It was unrecognized, uncompromised, uncensored, and is still unsung. The month of February has been designated as Black History Month, but on the original Inside Sports, we celebrate Black History 365 days of the year. I have broken bread with some of the greatest sports personalities of our time. Presidents, congressmen, judges, entertainers, and some of the greatest athletes in every arena. We're going to travel back into Black American sports history. This show is titled Conversation with Legends, The Way We Were. These segments are designed to remind us where we were and where we are today. Progress, you be the judge. In 1988, Doug Williams became the first black quarterback to play, win, and become the most valuable player in a Super Bowl for the Washington professional football team. Guess what? In 2014, 26 years later, the Seattle Seahawks quarterback, Russell Wilson, makes his debut and wins and should have been the most valuable player also. No way this brother was not, not going to be the most valuable player. The way that he ran that offense, like a, I mean, he was a mechanic. You know, it was a funny thing how some of the sports writers want to call him a, a manager of a team instead of a, a quarterback, you know, who did all the right things with his feet, with his head, and with his arm. He's a quarterback, not a team manager. And while we're on that subject, I don't think we have to wait 26 more years for the next black quarterback to play and win a Super Bowl. In 2013, the National Football League opened its regular season with 16 black quarterbacks on the roster. And over half of them started sometime during the year. So definitely there will be a, a black quarterback in a, in a Super Bowl real soon. And while we're talking about progress, well, let's look at the NFL. There has not been any progress in ownership, minority ownership of an NFL team. In 2014, there are still no minority owners uh, in the NFL. It's still a good old boy system. But there is one good sign. At least they have started rehiring five black coaches back in the day. If you got fired, I think Dennis uh, Green was the only one I know that ever got rehired. Well, they had, two of them got rehired this year, and that was Lovey Smith, who should have never been fired from the Chicago Bears, and Jim Caldwell, who got fired from the coach, but guess what? Hooked up with the Baltimore Ravens and won a Super Bowl, and now he's back in the mix. Let's take a look at Major League Baseball. 2014. 1947, Jackie Robinson kicked down the doors to integrate Major League Baseball. 2014, there are less than 10% African Americans found on Major League Baseball teams. Jackie must be turning over in his grade. NBA, they have one black owner, and he's questionable. Red Auerbach and Walter Brown started it all back in 1950 when they drafted Chuck Cooper as the first black player. Well, National Hockey League. <laughs> no surprises there. There are no, there are no minority owners. In fact, <laughs> minority skaters are far few and in between. <laughs> and professional tennis, hey, thank God for Richard Williams. I mean, what... He was able to do with his two daughters, Venus and Serena, who've been carrying the sport for the black community for over a decade. Come on, Sloan Stevens. Come on, Donald Young. Hey, give them a break. Give them a break. You know, while we are talking about, uh, as we look back, I'm going to take you back to a show on Inside Sports that... Um, there was a, a call in. We'll start with the call in to my show. There was a young man that called into my show, and he was talking about how unfair 
things were and are today, especially in media. And he was uh, brought up the name of Leonard Shapiro of the Washington Post, who just retired after 41 years. 41 years as a sports writer with the Washington Post. And he's talking about somebody really lucking out. But Leonard Shapiro was a part of a group down there, man, that never played fair. That included Tom Boswell, uh, Tony Kornheiser, um, and John Feinstein. They never played fair. There were some good people come out of there. Of course, we know about Shirley Povich, the, the legendary Shirley, Shirley Povich. I had a pleasure of meeting and talking with him. Uh, I get ready to have him on my show one Saturday, and uh, he caught a bad cold. Never got a chance to uh, get Shirley Povich on the inside sports. But there were also Byron Rosen, Tom Callahan, uh, good guys, good guys out of that sports department. I used to I used to write for the Washington Post. I used to do some freelancing. George Solomon let me do freelancing every now and then. I would write I would write a couple of articles. So I was kind of familiar with the staff down there. And those four guys right there, I'm telling you, Boswell, Feinstein, Tony Cohenheis, and Leonard Shapiro, they uh, never played fair. And I want you to listen to this conversation uh, with this young man who called in on the air talking about uh, Leonard Shapiro. Hey, uh, how you doing, buddy? Hey, hey, Walker. Hey, keep reporting it. Keep reporting it for me <laughs> exactly the way you report. <laughs> and one thing we got to remind ourselves: mm -hmm. this is inside and outside sports, mm -hmm. and you report the news as it happens, mm -hmm. as long as it's accurate. There's no problem with it. So I know your information is accurate, and I definitely want you to keep reporting it for me because I don't have no other way to get the inside affairs of what's going on in our city unless it's reported to me. Mm -hmm. And one thing we got to remind ourselves of is most recently, about two nights ago, Ted Koppel interviewed uh, the nominee for the uh, Defense Department, Bobby Hamlin. Mm -hmm. And if anybody in the world is familiar with Ted Koppel, you can't come on his show, Duncan and Dodge. Mm -hmm. He points the questions, mm -hmm. and he reports it just as, as they are. Mm -hmm. And if you try to sidetrack him, he bring you right down the tunnel to report the news. Mm -hmm. Now, Hemman had a lot of problems because he was uncomfortable with a lot of things said about him in his nomination. But nevertheless, Koppel reminded him with his paranoia and discomfort with the media, that that's what media is all about. It is to bring the information to the people. And as long as it's accurate, we all are afforded. That's right. And which brings me up to another thing, uh, and it is not the right time, just cut mm -hmm. me short. Mm -hmm. But I think around January 4th, or so saw articles in the Post about Leonard Shapiro, mm -hmm. and I hope I'm not repeating anything previously you said. Mm -hmm. But he had kind of a New Year's wish list for all of the sports, <laughs> sports uh, commentators and talk sh sports talk show hosts in the area. And I think it was deliberate, oh, yeah. in particular with Harold Bell, he omitted you. Mm -hmm. uh, he may have forgotten Glenn, Glenn Harris, that is. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, maybe it was delivered with Glenn. But this is this is the distortion of the media mm -hmm. when they have when they're supposed to report these things to us just the way they are. Now I think that that's clearly personal with whatever his personal side of the coin is with you. Because I'm convinced it's a deliberate omission of you not to recognize you as a sports show host and a, and a talk show host. That distortion of the media we should be uncomfortable with. We should not be uncomfortable with you reporting information as it is. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'll close on one other thing real briefly. Mm -hmm. I think the incident of uh, the skaters, uh, Kerrigan and uh, Tony, Tony, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a sad reflection of the society today, mm -hmm. but I think it's an accurate one. Right. You see what I mean? Winning is the only thing. That is so greatly taken out of, out of context. It's truly sad. You see, this winning at all costs to make these things, mm -hmm. personally, I think she's involved. I don't think something like that could happen when you not be involved. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, is winning doesn't make any difference how you win. Mm -hmm. And what be it money, 
uh, of whatever they claim this is all about. The bottom line is, it's a distorted value system that we have. Mm -hmm. So that's another poor representation of the world state of affairs we present to the young children. You look at the athletes fighting on TV and mm -hmm. all of these sports, the fines are, are, are so light that they'll continue to fight until they really do something to make it stop, like dock them some pay from them big salaries and they'll stop conducting themselves that way. But maybe that's another show. Yeah. But my point is, it really is a, a sad issue, but the fact of the matter is, that's the world situation that they are. I'll cut you loose, All man. Right. Just listen to you, bud. All right. Thanks so much. Sure. Okay. Uh, that was Inside Sports. And uh, one of my callers, that was Walter Bell. His name was Walter Bell. No kin to Harold Bell. But he was right on time. And he, uh, what he was saying about Lynn Shapiro, uh, I found fascinating because, you know what? Lynn Shapiro came on Inside Sports trying to uh, sell his book, The Real John Thompson. And I think I kind of outed him because the book wasn't about The Real John Thompson. And by him coming on Inside Sports, I called it just like I saw it, you know, and uh, I think he never forgot that. I know he never forgot that. And him retiring 41 years, just thinking somebody that incompetent lasting for 41 years on the show. He probably sold about 10 copies of the real John Thompson. And I'm going to bring you back uh, that interview, my interview one-on-one -on -one with uh, Leonard Shapiro as he tried to uh, sell his book. But that's what it's going to be about uh here on the, the legends of inside sports, the way we were, our conversation with legends. It's always going to be something that I'm, I hope that you will learn something from, okay? So until next time, I'm Harold Bell. If you cover me, gone.